Okay. Great. All right. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see we have a, a, a lively group today. So uh, anyway, what we're talking about today is the festivals of new grain, new oil, and new wine. Uh, these are some festivals. Uh, they're not. They are not ordained feasts in the Torah, except for the first one, perhaps or the uh, the wave offering, and that's where we'll start. Um, the Dead Sea Scrolls reference four different types of first fruits offerings, whereas uh, in the traditional messianic keeping of things, we we know about the first one, and and that's called the uh, the barley, the wave offering, the wave sheaf offering. Uh, these are denoted as festivals in the scrolls, which record the Zedekite calendar. These different offerings occur at fifty day intervals. There are actually two first fruits of the grain type offerings. Uh, barley is the first of the two first fruits of grain. And so this is the one I'm referring to the, with the barley is the wave sheaf offering that is offered uh, on the Zedekite calendar. It's a week the, the following the, sh the, the Sabbath after the week of unleavened bread. And we don't want to get into all that timing, but it's typically a week after the traditional method of doing it during the week. Uh, but then there, uh, this is where the uh, the first two verses that come up here, Leviticus 23, 9 through 10, where Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And the very first thing that they would be harvesting is the barley. And this is referring to the, the wave sheaf offering that is considered to be the uh, first fruits offering that occurs near Passover. <clears throat> and uh, which I stated on the Zedekite calendar comes uh, right after the week of unleavened bread. Uh, notice it says, uh, just to keep this in mind as we go through this, that it says, when ye come into the land which I give unto you. So the land plays a role with these first fruits offerings. Um, let's see, it is offered in the waving of a sheaf on the 26th day of the first month, and this was on April 18th this year in, in 2021. Uh, the day the sheaf is waved then begins a 50 day count to the next first fruits grain offering, which we know as uh, the Feast of Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. Day 50 of each count will also be the day one of the following count, and each of these counts ends on weekday one. Uh, we'll get, I'll explain that a little bit better. But to, to give you an idea of this 50 day count, it is spelled out here in Leviticus 23, 15 and 16, where you count from the morrow after the Sabbath. So that would be on a weekday one from the day they brought the sheaf of the wave offering. So that would be that the, this day of the first the wave sheaf offering of the barley and count seven Sabbaths, seven Shabu Shabuot. Seven weeks, seven sevens shall be complete, even unto the morrow after the seventh <coughs> Sabbath. So again, that we're looking at a weekday one, and you number 50 days. So you have seven sevens, that's 49, plus the day after is the 50. So I think we all have an understanding of that, but I just want to break it down to be real clear on what this 50-day interval is. And then it begins on a weekday one, and it ends on a weekday one, and it includes seven complete weeks. So that when we count for another 50-day uh, interval, that 50th day on weekday one is also the same as weekday one for the first day of the next count, of the next uh 50 days because there again then it goes another seven full weeks and then the morrow after that seventh sabbath so then that brings us uh 
Well, okay, back up here to the uh, this uh, to Shavuot. Oh, this is a fruit. It's it's called the Feast of Weeks for the fifty day count, but it's also there's a dual thing going on here. It's a first fruits offering of wheat. So this is when the wheat harvest starts. And we know that Shavuot is uh, loosely aligned to Pentecost in the Christian tradition, and there's a lot of spiritual. Um, history and uh meaning to just this one day it's the only feast uh that's in torah that's just one day long the others you know cover a, a week of time and this one is only a day right in the middle and i find always found that very interesting uh shavuot will always fall on the 15th day of the third month on the zedekite calendar and this year it was on sunday june 6th so then on Shavuot, we begin another 50-day count that takes us to the festival of new wine when the first fruits of the grape harvest is offered. This always falls on the third day of the fifth month. And this was on Sunday, July 25th this year. Now, these are things that we know for sure were observed on the Zedekite calendar. And this was a whole new idea. To, to Karen and I when we found these things uh, that these were part of the calendar. It's like, wow, really? Another first fruits offering? And then come to find out, there's another one. Then we count another 50 days. It takes us to the festival of new oil when the first fruits of the olive harvest is offered. And this always falls on the 22nd day of the sixth month. And this year it will be on September 12th. So we have three, well, two extra first fruits offerings. The only first fruits offering we we knew of were the first fruits of barley and Yeshua being our first of the first fruits, and then the first fruits of wheat on, on Shavuot. But now we have these three 50 day chunks rather than just one 50 day count on the Zedekai calendar. We do find biblical support to show us that these first fruits offerings of grain, wine, and oil were to be made. Uh, like I say, when we when we do our research and we find things in extra biblical uh, text or documentation, we always run it through the filter of the Bible of our of our canonized scripture. We have to be careful using extra biblical non canonical texts. And what we are finding is a lot of this information that pertains to this calendar is contained outside of the Bible, but it really fills in some of the gaps and it fits like a glove into our scripture, into our Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible supports this information. It does not, there is no conflict here. Uh, an example here is found in Deuteronomy 14.23. Next slide. Oh, yeah, next slide. Yep. Yeah, see if it'll go. I was afraid of that. <coughs> it's not uh -oh. I wondered if when I started recording, if that. Uh, oh, it locks up when you start recording. I don't know, but I'm going to have to escape. Okay, let me see if I can, can, can get us back on track here. Um, okay. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Okay. Where's your shared window? It said it was paused, so that's where I ran into this problem before. Sharing is paused until you return to the shared window, which is. I think you found it last time. I'm not sure how it is. This did it. Do y'all see that? Yep. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Let's go with that. Okay, so in here in Deuteronomy 14:23. Says that thou shalt eat before Yahweh, thy Elohim, in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil. So here we have corn, wine, and oil. And notice, notice that the uh, the corn here is Strong's H 1715 Dagan, which means grain. So that 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 covers both the uh, the barley and the and the wheat offerings. So these three things are quite often mentioned together. When it's talking about the tithe of the corn, there's, you see corn, wine, and oil, or the, the, uh, the meal offering, or the grain offering, uh, always mentioned in, in, in this threesome of corn, wine, and oil. 
the tithe here does indicate a first fruits offering. Um, the corn, wine, and oil do seem to be important to Yahweh. And they also have a bearing on the land. And notice he says, to, in the place which he shall choose to put his name there. Uh, you can go ahead and bring up the next this next slide now, Dan, if it'll work. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Here are some verses mostly, and I mean, it's amazing how many are in Deuteronomy. And there are various places throughout the Bible, though, throughout Scripture, where it mentions these things in the threesome. There's uh, the corn, wine, and oil. And you can see where in Deuteronomy, which you could consider Deuteronomy to be a summation of the total Torah. Right. You know, it's often referred to as second Torah. That uh, over and over, Moshe is referring to corn, wine, and oil together. Uh, the corn, when you look it up, it's actually grain. Yeah, I yeah, said that. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to just okay, emphasize it's, it's that because yeah. so, we keep talking about corn just so you have that firmly well, in Well, if you look at a little head of wheat, it looks like a little, you know, you can see how yeah. corn and, corn and the, the head of a wheat or any other kind of grain, grass plant looks very similar. We've been eating sweet corn. so we, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the... Uh, there, we have six verses here in Deuteronomy that show how these are all paired together. And so it seems like when we started looking into it, um, and then here in Deuteronomy and Numbers too, that it's very interesting how they're always lumped together. So why would you have a, a first fruits offering uh, as a, uh, uh, you know, so important, you know, for the barley and for the wheat, and then not have a first fruits offering for the wine and the oil? Uh, yeah. I always thought myself that these offerings were just kind of, well, when you happen to go, you know, you get your, your tithe together, you go take it to the priest whenever you can or something like that. But there may have been a little bit more, a uh, little more structure to it. And it may have been commanded a little more specifically, actually, that we don't, that we don't understand. Uh, the first five, five verses here that we show, no, you can go back, Dan. Yeah, go back, get ahead of us here. Uh, the first five verses are have to do with blessings, and then the uh, Deuteronomy eighteen four, no twenty eight fifty one, Deuteronomy twenty eight fifty one has to do with a curse. So uh, yeah, and he shall eat the right, and then so your corn, wine, and oil, or the increase of your kind or your flocks, uh, are you're not going to have them. So this tithing. We see as a a way of I mean the the tithe is supposed to be the the first fruits of your of your harvest, so and it has to do with this connection to the land. Uh, many many of these verses in Deuteronomy, uh, they use the phrases in the land or of your land in the place which he shall choose of thy land, uh, and then here in Numbers. They list these first fruits of oil, wine, and wheat as offerings as well. So likewise, we find these uh, these offerings in Nehemiah. Now you can go to the next uh, that next one in Nehemiah when they come back into the land it, after they've been through the captivity and everything. Uh, in Nehemiah, it states here: For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the corn, of the new wine, and the oil. Here, all three of them are all together again. Unto the chambers, where are the vessels of the sanctuary and the priests that minister and the porters and the singers, and we will not forsake the house of our Elohim. And then here again in Nehemiah 13, verses 5 and 12, it talks about the tithes of the corn, the new wine, and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites. The tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries. that says they, did, they brought them in. So the, there's a biblical... And without a doubt, there's a biblical standard that is being established for not only first fruits of of the grain, the corn, but also of the wine and the oil. And so Bill, now, yes. Yeah, I have a question. Um, that's real interesting. I just saw that for the first time. You highlighted commanded, and um, you know we're we're actually looking into some things about how passages were deleted where was it commanded i mean previously that they would have known that because 
it kind of makes you wonder, was it there? You know, the, the lying pen of the scribes, did they go out and and uh, take these things out that were originally? Well, you're, you're sort of, you're commanded to bring your tithe to the priest. Okay. Um, and the priests have, that's what the priests have to live off of because they didn't get an inheritance. So they are, you know, with the, the other right. tribes are commanded to, to bring their first fruits to the priests. And that's how they are to uh, survive. Basically, it's for their survival and for their uh, needs to be met. We, Since, uh... But that's, there's, we are wondering though, because this does seem to be such a, a, uh, what am I trying to say? There seems to be a structure here that has that we that is missing in place, but missing. Yeah. Uh, we there. we highlighted commanded for a reason. We wanted to draw that to your attention because it is one of a of more than one reference that indicates that there is something missing, and we're going to get into that next week. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, there you go. Karen, I always think like you. Girl, you're my twin. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so anyway, now I'm going to turn it over to Karen because this is, I just wanted to lay out the biblical foundation here that is in our, in our canon, in our scripture that we have. And now she's going to throw in what the Dead Sea Scrolls, how they, how they look at it and, and the information that they bring to us that can help bring more clarity to all this. And my intro was going to be that it was commanded but strangely enough it wasn't told you how to fulfill the command and you have to go to the dead sea scrolls to find that so if we go on to the next slide yeah there you got it um we find that the wheat festival took place 50 days after shabbat um and then 50 days later came the wine festival and 50 days later came the um, oil festival. Then if you go to a different scroll, number 11, Q19, you come to a reference that says, you shall count seven full weeks from the day on which you bring the sheaf of the wave offering. That would be your barley harvest. You count until the day after the seventh Sabbath, 50 days, and you bring your new grain offering, which is your wheat harvest. And it shall be loaves baked with leaven out of wheat. So there's Shavuot. So there's your Shavuot. Then you find, um, are we at the right slide? Next, uh... Next slide then, please. Yeah, there we go. You shall count beginning from the day when you bring the new grain offering, which was your wheat offering, another 50 days, and bring new wine. And that, then it says they will have made atonement for the wine, so that the children of Israel are to rejoice before the Lord, this being an eternal statute generation after generation, wherever they dwell. Statute is a type of law. They shall rejoice this day, for they have begun to pour out a fermented drink of offering new wine upon the altar of the Lord, an annual rite. Now, I would also like to throw in a question. Do you think it was an arbitrary thing that Yeshua chose wine to be his blood of atonement? Right. To represent his blood of atonement? Right. Uh, wow. <laughs> um, it mentions a third of a hen here um, that was what each tribe was to bring and a hen is roughly one and a half gallons or 5.7 liters I've added that to the Dead Sea Salt Squirrels glossary that we are forming as we go so I need to get a new copy to you Julie so that you can distribute it as needed and I'll be adding one other thing to it as we proceed today as well. Um, that word atonement for is interesting though. They have made atonement for the wine. What does that mean? Um, Bill and I have discussed that. We can't pinpoint it exactly, but when we thought about it, 
it seems to be a state of acceptability before Father. If you look at what Yeshua did, he came to provide atonement for mankind. And that wasn't just a forgiveness of sins, it was to bring us into right standing with him. And we feel like that's kind of what's going on here. It's a merging together of heaven and earth. Atonement can be broken down into a, or at, I'm sorry, at one month. Okay, so at one month shows a unification or a unity. And we believe that is between heaven and earth. And that these festivals are to create that union as we bring the new wine offering of the of the land. Well, and I think the thing with atonement is that we are designated for that unity, right. for that union. We are designated, and and this wine is designated. Then it's 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 designated. It's not just to have wine to drink. It's it's a designated. Maybe not hallowed yet. It isn't hallowed, but it's uh, not a holy thing. But it's it's given a status that it has purpose. A divine purpose There's, in our. It's earth. appointed for things in our earth. Yeah. Right. And then uh, moving on, we see the next scroll writing um, says that from that day, the day of the wine offering. We count another 50 days and we come to the new oil and each tribe gives a half a hen and they are to be put on the altar as well and they have atoned for the oil of the land. So uh, again, this is an eternal statute for generation after generation and we're to rejoice before the Lord. Now, how how do we observe these festivals today? Say you and I wanted to observe these festivals. It's a little bit hard to do that because one, we're not in the land and two, even if we were, there's no altar. So we're a little limited in, in how we can do this, but it tells us wherever they may live. So that would mean if we're considering ourselves as part of Israel today, Wherever we may live, that would include here in the United States, I would believe. We are to kind of observe these um, statutes in, in a sense, in a form. And it should be a rejoicing, yeah. it a should celebration. be a rejoicing. That's just what I was going to yeah. get to. Um, we, we just, we, we can't do the other things, but we can rejoice. And that doesn't mean necessarily that you have to say, I can't work that day because there's no mandate These for are that. Not a Sabbath. These aren't Sabbath designated Sabbath or rest days, but they're days of rejoicing and celebration. And uh, that we good. can do. Good. Steve, uh, Stephen has a question. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I realize uh, you know, there is kind of a staggering and when the crops grow at different times. Um, I know that um, around here anyway, August is when we get the grapes in. Um, what, when, is, when is the actual, when is the date for the the, the, the new wine offer, first fruits? That was, it was in July. Uh, it so is it, is it, it also says it's, it's, it's supposed the, to be. The third day of the fifth month is the grape harvest. Okay, so that's actually before now the. Now that's Jerusalem. Well, here, here it's before the grape harvest, but. I mean, I would think it would be correlated with the grape harvest there, but it said fermented. So does it have to delay a year before I it's caught? Or, or, that's or, a, I've, I've often wondered not, if, when it says new wine, if it's talking about just grape yeah, juice. Yeah, no, I saw that too. Juice, it said fermented but, new wine. It said fermented, so I, it takes a, a, at least a year, I guess, doesn't it? Or is, is it last year's? First fruits of last year's grapes, or how, how does it work? <laughs> that brings in other questions too, Stephen, because we think of wine as being fermented, and I wonder sometimes if they aren't saying wine when they mean juice. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, that, those are those are good questions. We don't have. It may be that they're starting the fermentation process for the next year and pouring that out as new wine. We don't know exactly what that means, and it's not clarified. Yeah. 
Okay, okay I just Googled the question. It takes roughly two to three weeks for fermentation to take place for wine. Okay, two to three weeks. Okay. It is a different word. It even seems early to me for the harvest. Okay, in, in Jerusalem, it's a little different than it is here. And I had yeah. the dates, but I don't have them in front of me. But it did, this it did June. fit within, no, um, the dates that the grapes um, ripen in Jerusalem. Oh. And this did fit within the criteria. So I think it's, it, it would work. Okay, it was July 25th this year. Yeah. yeah. So that might be about the time that, I don't know how Yovel does their thing I think every year. July, I think. August. Yeah. Well, there can be vast differences. I know I, even here in Lexington, I've got a friend that, uh, well, uh, Mr. Bill Cook, um, his figs came in three weeks ago, and our still we still got green ones, and our started coming in last week. So, wow. you, same variety, same variety. Uh, well, well we, we don't have any sun. That's our yeah, problem. but you know, I'm just saying there could be great discrepancy on on you know weeks difference right. of you know, harvest coming mm -hmm. in. Some early, like some apples coming in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's see. I think that's everything that we had to cover on the festivals, but we're going to move to the wood offerings. And Bill, you want to start us out there? Okay. Well, the, yeah, the wood offerings, I would, uh, these are different from these, um, first fruits festivals because th those involve the tithing and, and everything. Now the wood offering is a real mystery to us. And so we're just going to go over what information we have and, uh, just say this is an ongoing study to to learn more about it. Um, uh, let me just interject for a second. Yeah. I I put you in charge too quick here. <laughs> <laughs> that rarely happens. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to these uh, first fruits offerings, they do talk about the wood offering not only in the Dead Sea Scrolls, but it's referenced in our Bibles as well. And I wanted to look first at this Dead Sea Scroll entry. And it says the 12 tribes of the children of Israel are to contribute wood for the altar. Again, you have an altar here. Uh, and it's in the land. Um, those contributing on the first day are to be the tribes of Levi and Judah. On the second day, Benjamin and the sons of Yosef. On the third day, Reuben and Simeon. On the fourth day, Issachar and Zebulun. On the fifth day, Gad and Asher. On the sixth day, Dan and Naphtali. So we are looking at a specific structure here. Um, now we're going to see how that carries through in some of the scrolls, and yet other ones have a little different view. So... Um, we want to go to the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about it. And that's where I want you to start with the next. Yeah. So the Bible, it alludes to some of this as it, as it alludes to the, the new wine and new oil offerings also, but no details you know, on how to observe them. Uh, this is how it is with the wood offering also. The specifics regarding when and how to implement these things are conspicuously absent and the best we can do is to go by what we what we are told here also in nehemiah 10 now if you remember in nehemiah it was in chapter 10 and chapter 13 where we had verses before regarding the the corn wine and oil and so now he also picks up here in chapter 10 and we cast lots among the priests the levites and the people for the wood offering to bring it into the house of our Elohim after the houses of our fathers at times appointed year by year at times appointed to burn upon the altar of Yahweh our Elohim as it is written in the law. I mean, it only makes sense. They're doing a lot of these sacrifices in the temple and they don't have the wood there. People have to go get the wood and bring it to the priests. Bill? Yes. Here again, as it is written in the law? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that what? interesting? Karen, are you going to uh, cover that next week? Yes, I am. <laughs> is that cut out of the Torah? No, I, you know, this is what is so disturbing to me, but go ahead. The Torah, the Torah. Well, and then here again in Nehemiah 13, where it also talked about corn, uh, wine, and oil. Then here, and 
Verse 31, the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits. So apparently they did do some offerings with the first fruits. Which well, are, Stephen, Stephen just uh, mentioned that, you know, there are some biblical references to the order of the wood that is setting the wood in order on top of the altar. It doesn't say when you bring it or how or what, you yeah. know, but it just, it just, that's the part that's written in the Torah is that, yeah. that you have to burn the wood on top of on the yeah. altar. You know? <laughs> but it does look like what well, same way as written in the law. Wait a minute. Where was that? Where was it in the law? Because well, it looks like yeah. it's so it stands to reason if there is a certain way that you're even supposed to lay the wood on the altar, you can't just throw it in a pile and touch it on fire. Um, there's a there's a there's an order and a structure to pretty much everything that they're doing here. So there must be some sort of appointed times for bringing the wood to the to the priests. And so, biblically, we can see that this what first seemed like some sort of, you know, like, oh, come on, these the scenes were making things up. They're, they're, you know, what are they doing with this wood offering? You know, especially when you look at it on the calendar, if it starts after that uh, feast of or festival of new oil, which is on a weekday one, then the next six days means that the last day of the wood offering, they're bringing wood in on a weekly Sabbath. And we still don't understand that. We don't, it just doesn't make sense that they, that would be work. To me, it seems like that would be work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, we really wonder about, you know, if we understand it completely, you know, if, if the way it's written, if there's more, I you know, the, the 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 thing is with the scrolls there are fragments more fragments missing than there are that are accounted for <laughs> exactly. so there's a lot of information not there and i'll i'll address it but, but yeah okay so anyway we see that the okay hold, hold on. Where do you get the well he's said, just, said to. he's saying that in the scrolls we have a place that says that when you bring it for six days but the problem is we don't have all of the scrolls. We're just, even now, we're discovering more and more and more in the scrolls. It's only been in the last five years that it's exploded, this information. So we don't have all the information is what they were just saying on what that means, okay? Um, but he said that they, they bring it on the Sabbath, which doesn't make sense to him because that's considered work. Exactly. But where does it say that they bring it on the Sabbath? In the, he's yeah. saying from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, that would be, yeah, from the this uh, this uh, the six day offering that Karen went uh, through. No, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get into that. She'll get into bit. more of it. Yeah, okay. So anyway, I just wanted to say, you know, and biblically speaking, in, in our scripture, we do have appointed times apparently for bringing uh, the wood to the uh, the uh, let's see the. Uh, the status of the, oh, and also that the status of the wood offering is different from the first fruits offerings. Uh, this is not the same as these first fruits offerings. The scrolls don't even seem to acknowledge it as being an actual festival. And this is backed up by uh, a writing called the Wood Offering Celebration as written in the Torah, which is the, the title of a book written by Alex P. Jason, J-A-S-S-E-N, an article, not a book, rather, yeah, but a, a writing, a, a published paper by by uh, Alex P. Jason, who has a, a bio with about 20 pages of academic accolades. So this guy is a uh, is a real um, a real academic, an academic. What, what's academic the name writer. of that again? Alex P. Jasson. What What's the name of the article? The name is uh, the Wood Offering Celebration. Then a dash. As written in the Torah, and he has that in quotation marks. And and have you read that article? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, basically, it just uh, he 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 backs up the idea that you know these this wood offering was not on the same level as a as a as the festivals for the first fruits offerings. Okay. We don't have really um, every year on the so same now year. okay. <laughs> so Karen's going to get into more of what the Dead Sea Scrolls have to say now. Okay. Um, when we first started looking at this. It seemed overwhelmingly confusing. Well, we and haven't even put it on our calendar. 
Yeah, and, and when Julie <laughs> was asking me to do this at one point, I said, oh, Julie, it's, it's confusing. <laughs> 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 and I decided to jump into it hands and feet. And so actually when I finished, it was starting to make some sense to me. So I'm going to show you how we put this together a little bit. But that, Karen, with that said, I still believe in you and I have talked about this. More information is has to be forthcoming. From I, I totally concur. Right. Totally concur. Yep. And I can't wait until it does. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, we're going to go to, um, the next, yeah, yeah the, he's got it. Okay. Yep. After the festival of new wine, let them bring the wood two by two in their tribes. Well, maybe need, is it? And that is where it talks about, um, right after the, the new wine. And then the next one, it specifies that again and on your new moons and feast days. The sacrifice and all the work of the house they will bring after the festival of new wine. Let them bring new the oil. wood or new oil. 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 I'm, I'm saying wine. I mean oil. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but they're going to bring the wood after the oil festival. Now, um, we read just a minute ago which days they would bring it on the first day on the second day third day fourth day fifth day sixth day um, right after the new oil and if the new oil is on a Sunday that would mean the first day through the sixth day would take it through the Sabbath and the sixth day of wood presentation would fall on Sabbath and that's what Bill was referring to that was a little bit troubling to us mm -hmm. well what I'm wondering is when he says after the festival of new oil he could mean the next day or he could mean after the presentation of the new oil they start bringing the wood which would be on the first day of the right. week if it's the first day of the week, that would align with when it says on the first day, it would be these two tribes. On the second day, these two. And it would end on the sixth day. So we can't tell for sure which it is, but that seems to have a little bit better set with us. Sits with us better, but you know, who knows? We don't know for sure. <laughs> Do what, Stephen? These aren't Sabbaths, right? No. No. So why wouldn't you bring wood on that day? But she was yeah, saying okay. six <laughs> days in a row. <laughs> no, she was saying yeah. six days in a row that you Sunday, you know, the but first. I mean, those festivals that we're keeping are on the first day, right? But they're not Sabbaths. Right. right. They forbid the carrying of wood. Right. So you could carry it. Yeah, but she was yeah. saying for it would to go over to the weekly the Sabbath, Sabbath would be the sixth day of that. But what she was giving was a different scenario that if you started on the first day of the week sun i hate to say those words but the first yeah. second third fourth fifth sixth that would take it through the day before the sabbath right karen right and then rest on the sabbath right the the way that we understand from what the scrolls say we're not saying this is the right way but the 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 common understanding is that it does go on what we would call from monday through saturday so that's where we run into a problem is because of that sixth day of the wood offering being on a day, day, of, rest. Uh, day of rest. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to us. But okay. that's the, the way that we understand what the scrolls say. And we're wondering if what the scrolls are actually saying, if it should be on the uh, begin, those, on, begin on that first day on of the, the week. On the day of oil. On that day of the, of the Feast of uh, New yeah. Oil. It is. It, it just says after the festival of new oil. Could it be a week after the festival and they start again on the next first day? Well, then you have Yom uh, Teruah in that week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this I, comes I just ahead. Right. This comes just ahead of the fall festivals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. it, it's it's confusing because it doesn't seem to really work the way it's written. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't quite get it. So we have. We have deliberately uh, excluded it on the calendar because we don't know, we don't want to put it on the calendar until we know yeah. how it's really supposed to be. Exactly. We could have it on another calendar that's online. Um, 
Yeah, well, I mean, they're just saying they they, they want to wait till saying. more information comes forth on this um, okay. to put it on their calendar. Yeah, we go ahead and denote the first fruits um, celebrations and and you know of new wine and new oil. We we notate those on the calendar because it's pretty clear and specific that they those were part of the uh, Zedekite calendar. This is clear that it was part of the calendar, but we don't know exactly how it is supposed to be designated. Now, if it was to begin the day following the oil offering, um, that would make it the 23rd of the sixth month through the 28th of the sixth month, and that would be September 13th through September 18th this year, if you want to make a note. Um, it would end just four days, if that was the case, just four days prior to the beginning of the second half of the year on Yom Terah when they blow the trumpet. Um, then if we go to the next, let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, this is the last one. Scroll 4Q365. I think you need to back up. Maybe back up one. We were already on that one. Yeah, this is it. Okay, it, where it says on your new moons, I want you to make a mental note of that because we're going to talk about that shortly. If you look at an article by Michael Weiss is the one that wrote this book, The Dead Sea Scrolls, A New Translation. Um, it's the one that we do recommend usually if people are wanting a translation of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, it's a very, very good book. But he's one of three authors, and he has an article, well, it's very, very lengthy, um, that gives you more breakdown on what he sees as he covers this material. And he says that the On Your New Moons here is actually on the first of each month. So that yeah. makes sense to me. That makes much more sense to me. Well, that's how Vanderkam had, trans had worked his exactly. trans we found that, Karen, remember that Vanderkam translated moon as month as well. Right. And he, he was the, uh, the, month. the other scholar that did the same thing, so I did not realize this man did the same. Yeah, he so says there the are very those, same thing. Those, um, scholars out there that are realizing that translation. Right. Right. And if you want his dissertation, it's a very lengthy. Oh. Um, <laughs> very lengthy title here but i can i can send you that julie if you are interested hey, yeah send it to me okay let me interject here because uh ginger was just asking do we celebrate the new month or did you say the new moon no, she because said moon but i told her not said the a lot moon, of this thing moon, we've discovered not. is that the word moon is been english it's the hebrew word yare yare right. and yeah. we're really talking about new month kodesh Kodesh, right. right. And, and but as far as celebrating it, well, we, you know, there's no instructions of this is how you celebrate a new month. It just says celebrate it. Blow the trumpet, blow the trumpet in the, blow the, in the trumpet, new month. Blow the trumpet. Um, we acknowledge it. I mean, we. It, but it does say the scripture that it will come about from one new month to another and. And from uh, what was the other? Shall all flesh come to worship before me? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it's a little different, I guess, in the realm of uh, the celebration of it as compared to yeah, like again, it might be a kind of a rejoicing kind of thing, a re just a celebration. Yeah. yeah. Which is basically what we do. We might have a little something special to eat. We blow the trumpet and thank Father for another new month and. Exactly. Well, I guess, you know, it, you know our, our English words of celebration and festival, and when that conjures up, you know, images, carnival, festival, rides. Yeah, right. 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 <laughs> you know, you got the, the, new move, the new month is not really even considered a festival. It's just, I think, a time of rejoicing and celebration. And bear in mind, we're not talking about the, the new month according to the new moon. We're talking about the new month according to the Zeta Chi right. Exactly. Yeah. That, that Why did it say David asked permission to go to Jerusalem? Did you hear that question? That, did David, Jonathan, 
the thing with David and Jonathan. Yeah. Oh. David is saying, why did David, 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 why did David ask David permission to go to Jerusalem for the new month? It was payback. So what's your question? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, so there, it should be a celebration. Yeah, they did. They, right, right. They did do a well, three. Well, that may have been a. Uh, there was a, a three-day celebration that was mentioned in Samuel. Um, yeah. where David was saying it'll be a three-day celebration, and I think that was at the Chodesh between seasons. It looks like a change of seasons, a right? One of, of the, where you have the, the extra day, the tekufa, and all that. Right, and that is more of a celebration. But that celebration does tend to, like that, David and Jonathan, it, it conjures up like the, there's food and eating involved right. in this. Well, for, the, for those of you who right. don't know, who are new, there were four days that were non- calculated days that were intercalier days that are not listed as days that's how you get a 364 day calendar because yeah, it's 360 plus the four days for each season which happens it's to transition introduce it changes into summer, the season yeah. into fall into winter and into spring. it's tied exactly with the spring equinox the fall equinox the summer solstice the winter solstice that's why it's a solar calendar right right Okay. okay um, you want to go to your last slide? Yeah, let's go on to the last slide. I think we can move on to that. Um, the, the 15th day of the month here is the most significant. So as we look through these, focus on that 15th day of the month. There is actually a writing by McClintock, and he quotes many rabbinical sources in this writing to come up with what he comes up with here. And he shows that there were wood offerings nine days during the year, and they were at various times, but they were structured. And four of them are all, no, five of them are in the fifth month. The fifth, seventh, 10th, 15th, and 20th day of the fifth month, there were wood offerings. And then there were four others, and it was on the first day of the first month, and then the fourth month, 20th day, sixth month, 20th day, and the 10th month, the first day. So um, what we're looking at here is a considerable spreading out of yeah. wood offerings. Um, so, Karen, that would make more sense to me to bring it spread out throughout the year that's where we're headed <laughs> well then what was the source yeah there's a source somewhere about the first day of each month what was that one um did we pass i don't think we read it any? yeah it's uh oh by michael wise yeah yeah okay it's that uh, yeah the first day of each month that first, we were just talking about instead of the first instead of new moons, new moons right yeah right. that's in 4q 365 uh, from the dead sea scrolls so this uh, number three, right, number three there is from the rabbinical sources, and the other one, two, and number four are, are from basically scrolls. from the scrolls in various different places. Right. So the, the one, the first one is the one that is, seems to be the biggie that all the Zetakite calendar people are hung up on, but also in the scrolls, it does state on the first of each month, and then for the last six days of the year, there's a marginal note. On uh, on four Q three sixty five about that, right? Could one wow. and four be the same thing? Could what? Could one and four be the same thing? Stephen saying could one and four be the same? Well, thing? Uh, Karen will address that. No, I don't think a, they are. We don't think so, and there's a reason. Okay. Um, or is it the last? It's the last six days of the, the year that begins at Passover. Is that right? What happened? Okay. I heard a noise. Um, well, I, I didn't hear the question. Somebody in the lobby. It, I think somebody's in the lobby. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, it, sounded like it sounded like somebody's okay. in the lobby. Hold me, on. Uh, <laughs> the last six days was at 4Q324. Yeah. Somebody's in the house. Is that in that? That's in the house. Oh, it's Roberta. Yeah. Well, the, um, that last entry, Stephen, the last six days. That was from a gloss. Now, that's the second word that I added to the glossary. A gloss is uh, just a note, an annotation, sometimes marginal, sometimes within the text. 
on the manuscript about something that's being covered and there was a gloss on scroll number 4Q324D that indicated that the offering of the wood was on the last six days and we, we presume by the way it was written that it meant the last six days of the year. So that would be at the very end of the year. Um, so that would see if you see uh, the six days after the festival of new oil comes just before the fall feasts and the last six days of the year would be coming just before the spring feasts when they need a lot of wood for a lot more extra sacrifices exactly mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. true. and for the first day of each month they have special sacrifices yeah. uh, maybe according to the book of jubilees and some others so they would need extra wood each of those days but they aren't um, specifically rest days and then um, during the other days that are listed in number three there we had found that they needed wood for free will offerings, thank offerings, communion offerings, burnt offerings, as well as your feast days. So that's just an accumulation, I think, of woods for those times. So instead of being which one of these four is right, we're going to suggest that all of them are right, that they do not conflict, they add more understanding and that each one of these times were times that wood was offered and that the scrolls are trying to give us a more complete picture okay. so that's where we're at with the wood offerings okay uh steven has got something this is just a comment it's not related to the the collection itself of the you know or the when the when it's brought but jo i believe joseph good brought this out and i think it's from the mishnah he said okay. that the the, the the priests, you know how it says in the Torah that the, the people with a crooked nose or a broken yeah, this or that or whatever, yeah. a bunch of of things, can't serve before oh. Yahweh. What they would do in in the past and during the second temple anyway was that uh, they gave these people jobs that were out of sight under the, underneath the temple mount under you know they had. Um, the chamber of wood actually it was one place and down in the basement of that they had they had um a lot they had the altar of course but there were also other fireplaces throughout the the temple complex which were needed for other purposes and those men who had a defect in themselves were the ones that were assigned to sort the wood that was brought for the wood offerings to determine which of the wood was actually worthy of use on the altar yeah. itself or and what wow. wasn't wow. And yeah. other fireplaces yeah. throughout the temple. Mount. So wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, oh. Re related to that, Stephen, I would like to just mention, I kind of glossed over this and maybe shouldn't have. I did mention the importance of the 15th day of the fifth month. Um, it is considered the day of wood and it's given special highlight in most of the Jewish renderings. And, um, on this day, it says that the offerings were so general that even proselytes, slaves, nethanim, and bastards brought fuel, meaning wood, and they congregated together in a way that was uncommon, and that the women danced dressed in white, and there were often a lot of weddings on that day. It was a very celebratory day. But it was a time when um, people who normally had no prominence in um, the community were able to contribute what they had to contribute as far as wood. So um, I think that might have something to do with what Stephen's talking about. Here. Yeah, it reminds me of a song. All got children, got a place in the choir. Yeah. <laughs> Some sing higher. We'll play that next week. <laughs> place for everybody all right all right yeah. okay um what we're going to do is uh we're going to take a break and then we're going to do we're going to play believe it or not brad scott yeah everybody's been asking for brad scott we have 
Um, we said, okay, even if we do a very shortened tour portion today, we'll do Brad Scott. Um, yeah. uh, because, yeah. yeah, a lot of people have been But the Brad Scott there. thing's only like 25 uh, minutes. Uh, we're going to give me a heads up. I don't have time to get the food to you. Yeah, we, we're going to take a short break. Oh, now. I was supposed to give Carolyn a heads up. Half an hour to get over there. <laughs> with the food that I'm oh, sorry about you that. You can be here in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, mm -hmm. it'll take me a little more than that. Okay. Well, you want hey, to show Brad Scott right now? Well, we, I tell you what, you can hop in the car, come on over, and everybody take a bathroom break if you need to. But let's go ahead and jump into Brad Scott. That's okay. that would be better. Right, we'll go ahead and show oh, Brad yeah, Scott. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it's only, food. it's really only 320. Where, where is it? Yeah, we're in good shape. So come on over, Carolyn. All right, let me go to Brad Scott. I just have to Okay. All right, we don't just need to stop recording. Stop recording. Okay. Yep. I don't have a farm, so I don't have a grain on it. Stop. I don't have a. Uh, I thought about that. I don't have vine grows. So I'm not going to have 